Get protected today at shieldmutual.com. Hi, and welcome to the Shield Mutual Update for July 1st, 2013. A beautiful day on which to be free and happy. So I'd like to talk about a few different things today. But I think the the most, you know, the, the theme for today's episode is um, a quote that Bren Fra- Ben Franklin said, um, you know, quite a while ago now, uh, that we should, we should really know by heart, which is, um, you know, we, will, we, sh- we must either hang together or we will surely hang separately. And uh, there's a little bit of, uh, it's a little bit of a wry joke hidden in that quote. But it's so very true. And, uh, for example, I I saw uh, someone uh, posting a a comment on a YouTube video, not one of my videos, but I saw it last week. And a gentleman saying um, to the person who made the video, uh, you know, if I get arrested, uh, who's going to bail me out? You know, who's going to help me out? And one commenter uh, replied, not the person who made the video, another commenter. He said, why should I care? Uh, Why is it my job to bail you out? And, um, and this is um, exactly the wrong kind of attitude um, that we need to have if we're going to be successful as a libertarian community in realizing our vision for freedom, uh, prosperity, peace, and justice. Because, as Ben Franklin said, either we will hang together or we will definitely hang separately. Um, you know, they don't hang people anymore. But they will cage us separately or they'll put us before a firing squad separately or whatever. Because, um, you know, for some people, this may be a joke. For some people, this may be a pastime. For some people, this may be their outlet for their frustration uh, at whatever life they may lead. But for other others of us, this is a very serious matter. And uh, we have dedicated our lives to bringing about a um, a more just peaceful and prosperous society where we don't have people put in cages for victimless crimes, where we don't have drones uh, killing children or other innocent people in faraway places, um, and where we don't have the enormous uh, problem of poverty that is a global issue today and absolutely unnecessary. Uh, A lot of us would like to have a better world. We'd like to leave something behind. We'd like to be able to look back while on our deathbed and say that we made the world a better place, that our existence here was not purely for our own um, pleasure, although, of course, I take great pleasure when I'm able to help other people, and that is a selfish act in a sense, but it's all we also we, we helped other people. Uh, we made things better, and for those of us with uh, children, the urgency of uh, that need is even greater because we're leaving uh, uh, something behind for our children and our children's children. And purely on an egotistical level, I'm sure that many of us would like to be remembered once we're gone. Um, so keep that in mind as well. So uh, there was an incident this week, uh, last week where a, uh, a friend of mine was um, just passing by a house, I guess, where there were some DEA people doing something, and he broke out his video camera and started recording them. And one of them immediately attacked him. Uh, And among other things, said that he, you know, the, uh, my friend, he could get shot. You know, he said, here's an article from uh, Carlos Miller's photographyisnotacrime.com. A drug enforcement administration agent tried to snatch a man's camera from his hand after warning him that he was, quote unquote, liable to get shot if he continued hanging around with his camera. You know, the war on cameras is pretty insane. And I can speak for, about that from personal experience. Um, and uh, the, the, well, among other things, the DE agent said, why did you take my picture when I'm trying to protect you? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if we look at it from the DE agent's perspective, DEA agent's perspective, well, maybe my friend was trying to, to thank him, and, you know, put up his picture and say thank you for doing your job. Not really, but... Uh, um, but of course, you know, Carlos accurately points out if that was the case, he would have been watching out for his own safety instead of attacking uh, Ver- my friend over his camera. Um, and so, you know, there are cases of uh, misconduct and abuse by government bureaucrats all the time. 
And we have to be careful not to focus so exclusively on that, that we wear ourselves out and we erode our own morale. Uh, and in this case, I'd like to, there, there is no, um, there's a reporting of the story, well done, um, uh, you with uh, my friend's video, but there's nothing here that says what people should be doing uh, to make sure these kinds of things don't happen again. There's no action. And we have to keep in mind, at the end of every report about government abuse, there has to be a call to action uh, so that people know what they can do about it. So we don't feel powerless. So we don't feel like, oh, they got us again, and there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah? Um, there has to be that, and that's lacking in this article. Uh, and you can see at the top comment uh, is... Um, you know, just about how things are going to get worse in the future. Uh, it's, it's getting more surreal than the Vietnam era expression, quote, we had to destroy the village in order to save it, unquote. Um, there's no solution presented here. Um, and the solution is that we have to back each other up. We have to share this information. We have to educate ourselves. Uh, we have to band together to resist these kinds of things. And in this case... For this isolated incident, um, you know, if it had been a, a Shield Mutual case, I would have put out a blog post detailing it. I might have interviewed the uh, my friend. I would have uh, issued a press release to local media in the area where this happened. Uh, I would have shared it on uh, social media, and I would have asked people to call the local DEA office to voice their uh, opposition. And uh, that won't shut down the police state tomorrow, but that'll make him think twice before he does it to someone else again. Um, and and that's, a, that's a step forward, as small as it may be. Uh, another story I'd like to talk about real quick is uh, Baker's Green Acres, which is a farm in Michigan. And among other things, they uh, the gentleman there, Mark Baker, who's an impressive gentleman, I'll share a video, a little bit of video uh, about him, fr from him, uh, he farms feral pigs, which are basically, uh, I guess, wild pigs, sort of wild a little bit. Uh, they're not, you know, the white pigs, the farm pigs, um, you know, uh, but they're pigs. And I guess they produce good meat. You know, if you're a meat eater, if you eat pork, I, am Mark to uh, I generally try to avoid meat myself. I sometimes eat a little chicken. I definitely don't eat pork anymore. But, you know, what has you happened. may, and lots I of people do, and perhaps his pork is healthier or whatnot, but it doesn't really matter because he has uh, every right to use his farm there to produce the, the, the meat as he sees fit. But apparently Michigan has a problem with feral pigs uh, running around in the wild and causing some kind of damage. And even though Mark's pigs are behind a fence and uh, strictly controlled and uh, properly taken care of, the um, the local the government there and the state of Michigan is demanding that he kill all his pigs, that he depopulate them. Uh, that's the word in the uh, the official video there, um, and um, and he's been fighting them for more than more than a year. Now uh, this is a, Mark is not our customer. I wish he was. I wish he'd been our customer before uh, this this whole thing started, but. Um, you know, I think it's so very important. We often focus on the videographers, the people who confront the police, uh, the activists, uh, the pot smokers. But you know what? This is a really critical issue, the control of our food. We need good people like Mark Baker to be producing our food in, uh, you know, the ways that uh, folks like he, he do. Uh, he's a small farmer. When I was in high school, I remember, um, you know, the left supporting small farmers who were um, being put out of business by big agro corporations with the support of the U.S. government uh, through the use of farm subsidies and whatnot. Um, and this is a prime example of a small farmer. And he needs support from people across the political spectrum because this is not really a political issue as much as it's an issue of food. And we need to have control of the food that we're eating, and we need to be able to have good people like Mark behind that, and we need to ensure that the government is not shutting down independent producers like him. Uh, you can find out more information about um, that at bakersgreenacres.com. And I may insert a little uh, clip of a video uh, from Mark here, because he, he's, 
he's an impressive guy. Uh, it, it, there's another case here, um, California chalk protester. Now, this gentleman, 40-year-old um, uh, Jeff Olson, he chalked some anti-bank slogans in public space last year, and he's facing more than a decade in prison for it on vandalism charges. Uh, and besides how ridiculous that is, um, he's a gag order has been the judge has issued a gag order in a San Diego co courtroom uh, against this gentleman, uh, and he can't talk about the case against him. Um, and th this is uh, telling, you know, in previous episodes, I've mentioned how we have the advantage, we regular folks, uh, in pending legal matters because we can talk about them, but um, the judge and the prosecutor and whatnot, they can't. Uh, we have that advantage. Uh, and so when a judge gags someone in a pending legal matter as trivial as a little bit of chalking on a sidewalk, um, it shows that, um, you know, it suggests that perhaps the judge is a little bit afraid. Uh, and that's why it's so important to have somebody like Shield Mutual out there speaking for you. Because, um, you know, our assets are located offshore, uh, including me, our principal. So, um, you know, good luck trying to ensure a gag order on me. Um, you need people speaking out for you. And that this gentleman has been gagged. And he, even beyond that, um, the prosecutors, here's the quote from the article from RT.com. Um, prosecutors in San Diego aren't amused with his work, however, and have discounted Olson's assertion that he was engaging in an act of free speech. Judge Shore said earlier in the week that Olson's attorney is prohibited from mentioning, from, quote, mentioning the First Amendment, free speech, free expression, public forum, expressive conduct, or political speech during the trial, unquote. But the issuing of the gag order now limits much more than what was already decided. So, um, you know, not only is he not allowed to talk about his case outside of court, but he's not allowed to talk about it inside of court. I mean, he's not allowed to defend himself. He's not, I mean, this is just extreme. And this is the case, this is uh, just another example of how the, um, the court process is utterly bankrupt. Um, the government courts are utterly bankrupt because if he can't even mount a defense, uh, then it's just a kangaroo court. And this is why um, we all need to be covered by Shield Mutual or a competitor. I would love to have some competitors. Um, because uh, uh, when you're gagged, when your lawyer has, is prohibited from mounting a serious defense for you in court, we will continue speaking out. We will amplify whatever um, needs to be said here. We will not rest. And we will make sure your case is well prosecuted in the court of public relations, which is frankly quite important, perhaps more important than you might think. Justice may be blind. That's debatable, but it's not deaf. It is absolutely not deaf. Uh, I'd like to move on to another little quick topic um, about Atlantis, the online black market that let you, lets users buy and sell drugs and other things. Um, and uh, this is basically a new competitor to the Silk, Ro to Silk Road. You can only access it using Tor, um, which is a, um, a tool that allows you to hide uh, where your browsing session is coming from. So, for example, you can visit a website with Tor enabled on your computer, and it will be difficult, not impossible, but difficult for uh, law enforcement to figure out where you're actually connecting from. It could bounce you all over the globe, just like in those uh, movies. Sometimes where you see those spy movies where they're like, he's in Geneva. And then you see the little line go across the map. No, he's in Nairobi. No, wait, he's in Lima. No, he's here. And then, you know, it's, they're just following you all over, the, all over the globe. It's not foolproof, but it's quite good. But anyway, that's the only way to access Atlantis. Um, and some people are asking, um, is Atlantis a honeypot? Or is it some kind of trick or scam? Because they're running uh, a very gr aggressive ad campaign. Um, and, um, including a really cool video that I'll probably show you right here. Um, 
But I, I don't think it's a honeypot. I think it's for real. And I think, I suspect, I may even know some of the people involved with it. Uh, of course, that's just speculation on my part, because I think that these are um, very conscious libertarians, anarchists who are running this, and that's why they're being so open about it. Uh, and they even have a board of directors who gave an interview to a website at allthingsvice.com. Uh, the board of directors is the real tip-off for me. <laughs> Um, but I, it's just pure speculation that I may know these people on my part. I, I certainly, I'm not privy to any, any of this. Um, and the, one of the people in the board of directors, uh, says there's no good way to prove to the community that we're not a honeypot. All we can do is continue to do what we're doing and the success stories of the community will speak for themselves. Um, and th you know, this is a critical issue when engaging in illegal, uh, activism, because you have to hide identities and use false, uh, you know, code names and uh, encryption and all this stuff, you can't really be sure necessarily who you're talking to. And uh, this, for me, is a is a weakness uh, for us because um, Atlantis could go on for a year or two with enormous success and sellers uh, making all kinds of money and buyers getting all kinds of quality product at uh, good prices. Uh, they could be selling all the, this, these could be cops selling all their best stuff, uh, out of their evidence room. Um, cause you know, they got good stuff in there, but <laughs> they could just be accumulating evidence for two years and to the end user, uh, two years of, uh, you know, successful purchases or sales, including payment in your account is like, yeah, it's legit, but, um, they could just be accumulating evidence, you know? So that's why uh, I personally am not really big on illegal activism. Um, I don't think we have uh, we have explored the full boundaries of legal activism. And uh, you know, as far as I know, everything that Shield Mutual does currently is legal. It may become illegal in the future, but uh, I think we need to explore the limits of legal acti activism before we really take such serious risks. Because if the um, you know if the, the the marketing director and the CEO and the employees and the directors and all these people that are involved with Atlantis if they are um, you know breached even if one of them if their security is breached uh, they're going to get them all and that could be a lot of jail time um, for some people who are obviously really know what they're doing uh, with respect to liberty and that would be um, a terrible shame. Um, but I do like that there's competition. I think it, I like it a lot that people are competing with Silk Road, and then now there's competition. So you can really see, um, you know, the the advance of agorism, where uh, not only do we have people doing agorist things, but we have competition, and it's probably going to push prices down. So uh, huge kudos to um, to Atlantis. Uh, at the same time, yeah, definitely be careful. I don't, I'm not involved in any of that um, drug stuff, so, so I, I won't be buying from them. I don't, don't use any of that stuff, even though I completely support the right of other people to, um, to use it. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my camera died on me. This is the, uh, this is what it is to be working on a cause. Sometimes you have to work with substandard equipment. So anyway, um, you know, I, I think that uh, whether Atlantis is a honeypot or not, whether you are willing to take the risk or not, I think if I was a person who used, um, you know, uh, marijuana and if I ever got cancer, pff, I'd be buying that stuff in bulk, um, then I would probably take the risk um, just because I think, I think there are people that in the liberty community, I, I get that sense. Um, I think I think it's for real. Uh, that's just speculation uh, based on a hunch. Um, but I think that the most valuable thing about doing things like Atlantis and about um, also this is one valuable thing that has uh, come about as a result of Adam Kokesh's um, announcement of his July Fourth armed march on um, on Washington D.C. is. Um, See, sometimes when we talk about revolution or uh, evolution or agorism or 
you know, really taking the next big step as far as living our beliefs and making a more peaceful world happen, sometimes that can seem something really far away. And even something as milk toasty as the Free State Project's uh, tagline, Liberty in Our Lifetime, uh, can seem like, whoa, that's, that's not possible. That's impossible. Liberty in my lifetime? Liberty in the next 60 years? <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's absolutely ridiculous. How could you suggest that? Um, you know, that, that's pretty milk toasty, but for some people, they're like, you know, that's just insane. And so when something like uh, Adam's Arm March or uh, Atlantis comes out, it's like, wow, it's like a shock to the rest of us. Like, wow, are we really that far? Are we at that stage now? I wasn't ready for that, you know? And so it makes us see uh, our weaknesses. And one of those is the fact that um, uh, Atlantis's advertisement, video advertisement, which is um, all cutesy and harmless, really, um, was, is not in compliance with uh, YouTube's um, whatever, their policies and stuff, which, you know, YouTube can have their own stuff and what whatnot, but, um, I think, I'm pretty sure they removed the video. It seems like it. I, I couldn't find it this morning. And so that, um, you know, we need offshore, uh, hosting of things like video, um, because, uh, you know, if we can't put up and keep up our videos, then the revolution is definitely not going to be televised. You know, we're going to have a problem there. And, um, you know, so we need people working on all these new um, vulnerabilities and things that come up. I don't think Shield Mutual is going to be in, in doing offshore video hosting anytime soon. Um, and there are probably already people doing it. We just need people to step up and patronize, look for the service, um, patronize it, point people in the right way. And, you know, if it's not there in the right way, we'll provide that service. Uh, in a reliable way. So just getting back to the, uh, the part about, um, you know, hanging together, or we'll surely hang separately. Um, and really, this is the core of our, our strength um, as a community, is our connection to each other. Um, <clears throat> we are probably never going to be able to outgun um, the bad guys. Um, they're always going to have more money than us because they can print it. Uh, and they can buy guns with that, nuclear weapons, whatever. But our connection to each other is, frankly, more powerful than any gun. Uh, because they can take one of us out. They could take 10 of us out. They can take 100 of us out. But uh, if there are another 100 or 1,000 or whatever, and we know about what happened, then we have the courage to step forward. Then, um, you know, we can uh, do non-cooperation or, or whatever. And we can continue resisting. Um, and so that's why we have to hang together, because that's our primary uh, tool here, our, our, our strategic advantage against the state is our connection to each other. And so, um, you know, we have to be a little bit nicer to each other, a little bit less judgmental, perhaps. And I'm sure that I've been guilty of this. Um, you know, when someone says, well, who's going to bail me out, um, you know, the proper response is not F you, you know, screw you. Uh, nobody should be bailing you out anyway. It's, well, let's, let's figure that out. Let's figure out that's that. So anyway, I think that's enough uh, Shield Mutual updates for this week. Um, big news, the forum is almost ready. Um, and uh, we're going to start, we've already started actually with one customer, the pilot program to help uh, people grow their platforms um, to, um, to be able to implement the lessons from uh, Adam Kokesh's arrest uh, so that you know, our activists can be more well known and can have better connection to each other so that the groundwork is there when, when you get into trouble and Shield Mutual can exploit that to the maximum uh, in order to uh, support you and get you out of jail. So anyway, thanks for listening. It's another beautiful day. And have a great one. Get protected today at shieldmutual.com. <laughs>